A very good evening to everyone, to all the students who are joining us from across the country and uh, in different parts of the world also. Uh, I'm Devesh Lati from the Next Genius Foundation, and I want to congratulate all of you for clearing the Next Genius Level 1 test and moving ahead, moving forward in your journey of winning this transforming, life-changing scholarship. Congratulations. Uh, and we are here now to share with you about the next steps and to take you through the level two form to tell you about what the process will look like after this. So congratulations uh, once again, and uh, let's get going. Uh, before uh, we get going, uh, I'll just uh, share with you about what all next steps are there. And I'll share my screen now. Okay, so all of you who have reached, you know, who have cleared this, the first test or the level one test would have received the link of the level two page, which is this page. And uh, level two is not a test. Level two is a process where you shortlist colleges for yourself. This is a, a step where we get to know more about you we we identify a lot of information about you we ask you a lot of questions and at the same time you also tell us about your college preferences you tell us about uh, your college choices so uh, once you are on this page uh, this is a page which is on the website next-genius.com forward slash level dash two yeah and uh, this is the main page for the whole process now and the next steps uh, will all be here. All the information that you need is on this page itself. Okay. So when you uh, open this, the very first link that you see is called the level two instructions. This is the most important document for you because this is a document uh, which has all the details that you will need uh, to move forward. So you need to go through these instructions very, very thoroughly. Yeah. You need to read this document, reread doc, uh, the document and the steps and understand the process. Uh, I'll just go through the program timeline and show you what the next steps uh, will look like for you. So right now we are in the stage where you are all uh, getting ready to submit the level two form. Uh, and this is what we call as a college selection uh, stage where all of you submit your college preferences to us. And apart from the college preferences, you also submit your, uh, um, uh, your uh, academic information, your financial information, family information, school information. So we have a very elaborate form that you will fill. And I'll, I'll talk about that form in the next few minutes. Uh, but that is the process which is going on right now. Once you do that, we will assign you one college. So within two weeks, we will get back to you. And, and when I say two weeks, since uh, some of you will watch this video a little later, I must tell you that uh, we will start assigning you the college from 14th of October. And if you are filling the form after that, you will get the college allocation within three working days. So let's say if someone fills the level two form around 15th of October, then you will get a college allocated by 18th of October or so. Yeah. What college allocation means is that when you tell us about your top five college preferences, we'll assign you one college from the list of five. And that is the college for which the next steps will happen for you. And that is the college for which you will be interviewed. And that is the college for which you will be considered for a next genius scholarship. So once we have assigned you a college, you will then get back to us confirming the allocation, you will say that, yes, I'm happy with this allocation. Thank you for allocating this college to me. I would like to proceed. I would like to go ahead in this process. And here is a confirmation and you'll have to submit a 4,000 rupee refundable deposit. That's a deposit that is fully refunded to you at the end of the process, no conditions. You just need to participate in the process, uh, participate in the interview and application, submit your application and the refundable deposit is re re returned to you. And that is how you confirm to us that you are interested and that you would like to block a seat with us. You would like to block an interview spot with us. Once you confirm the college allocation by paying a refundable deposit, you will participate 
in a college information session where colleges will uh, come and they will tell you uh, information about themselves. They'll talk with you about the programs and the residences and expenses, all of that, a lot of very interesting things, uh, the campus and the community uh, in, in an online Zoom meeting just like this. And you will be interviewed or not really interviewed, but you will actually get a chance to interact with a student from that college. So they will ask you some questions and you will also ask them some questions about the college. So uh, that's what is called as a video interview recording. We call it, we, it's also like a video interaction with a current student at that college who is also a past next genius scholar, yeah? So you will have the, those sessions and then you will submit your college application by January 1. When I say submit your college application, it means you need to submit everything, your common app or your uh, college application. If you're applying to Plaksha or Vijay Bhumi, the Indian universities, you'll have to submit the college applications. Uh, the teachers will have to submit their recommendation letters and transcripts. Uh, if you have taken SAT, ACT, You'll have to submit those scores. If you want to submit those scores, all colleges are test optional. So it's not mandatory, but if you would like to submit the scores, you can. And you will have to uh, submit your English proficiency scores like the Duolingo or TOEFL or IELTS, those scores. Once that happens, then comes the main, the most exciting event of the uh, whole program, which is the online group interviews and award ceremony. So again, group interviews will happen on Zoom. It's an online interview uh, and you will be a part of a group of students uh, who are applying to the same college, who are being considered for a scholarship at the same college. And uh, you will participate in that interview. And uh, at the end of it, you will get to know about your scholarships by 26th of January. Yeah. Okay. So that's a little bit about the process. Now let, let's just... Uh, um, uh, take you through the next items on this list. Uh, there is a comparison matrix uh, uh, where you will find information about all the colleges uh, uh, on, a, on a Google sheet uh, where you, you, you can compare all the colleges. And there is a map of all the colleges which are there located in different parts of the country and the world. And then there is the form, the level two form, which is like the main form that you need to fill. So um, to fill the level two form, you will need the following information. And I'm not going to go through all of this, but you can read this information because it is pretty much self-explanatory. But the one thing that you need to do very carefully, the one thing that you need to pay most attention to is submitting the college preference order, the order in which, you know, uh, so we ask you to submit your top five choices, the top five colleges that you would like to be considered for. Uh, and that preference order is very important. Selecting the colleges very carefully uh, for the process, uh, selecting and being you know, very uh, systematic and thorough uh, while filling the selection, uh, the preference order, uh, the college preference order is very important. Um, you need to think about fit. You need to think about which college would you like to go to, what uh, kind of uh, city, uh, weather condition, all of those things, uh, the academic setting, the major that you're planning to study. So while giving your preference order in the level two form, you need to think about fit. Uh, and I, I tell this to everyone that don't go behind just rankings. You know, rankings are just one of the pieces of the puzzle, but it's not the most important piece. You know, rankings uh, can... Uh, can be misleading at times. So don't just run behind the rankings. Look deeper, go deeper into the colleges, explore more, explore thoroughly, because if you fill your uh, preference order carefully, it definitely increases the chances of winning the scholarship. Uh, if you just go behind a couple of parameters and not, if you're not very thorough about the level two form, uh, then, you know, you are just in the wrong race. Yeah. So think about the kind of college that you would like to go to. Think about the majors that you would like to study. I'm also going to go uh, to share with you about the comparison matrix, which will help you identify the college for yourself. And Team Next Genius is here to guide you 
to help you identify the right colleges for yourself. Yeah, so we'll always be there to support you and to guide you through the process. So that is one thing, that's the college preference order uh, that you will need to submit in the level two form. And then there are two videos, two short, two minute videos that you will have to submit. One is a video of yourself answering two questions. Question number one is why do you want to study in the US or why do you want to study, uh, uh, let's say at Plaksha or Vijay Bhumi, so at the colleges in India. So why do you want to study at the colleges that you have selected in your level two form? That's question number one. Question number two is what are the factors or what are the top three priorities that you have considered while selecting the preference order? Right. So those are the two questions that you'll have to answer. And your parents, when I say parents, it can be your mom or dad or both sitting together, or it can be a guardian who is going to pay for your education, or it can be an elder sibling who is going to pay for your education. One of these will have to record a two to three minute video, and it can be in a regional language also, Hindi or Tamil or any language that they would like to uh, talk in. And they will have to answer these three questions. What do they do? Why do they want to send the send you, send the children abroad for their education? And how will they pay for the living expenses? Now, you'll have to record these two videos and you'll have to upload it on YouTube as an unlisted video. How to make an unlisted video? There is a short tutorial over here. You can watch this and you'll have to upload it as an unlisted video, not as a private video because private video is something only you will be able to watch. We will not be able to watch. So you'll have to upload it as an unlisted video and put that link in the level two form. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's, let's now go to the next steps. Let's let me show you the college comparison matrix, uh, which is the most important tool when it comes to selecting college, right? I, I believe all of you would have access to that. Uh, but may, may I request Devika to just put the link, the short URL in the chat. Uh, so you can just copy paste that and visit, uh, come to the college comparison matrix, but stop browsing that right now. Just listen to what I'm saying. I think uh, it's important that you understand how to use it, right? Uh, this is the comparison matrix, which has information about all the colleges, uh, which are there on the next genius board or, or all the colleges for which you can win a scholarship. For all these colleges, you have a brief introduction, uh, about a uh, hundred words of introduction, a couple of sentences. So you will get a, get a hang of the, what the college is all about, what the college is like. Uh, then there are the list of most popular majors, which are offered at the college. Then there is, uh, the, the airport, the most, you know, the largest airport, which is near the city or near the college. There is the location setting, whether it's uh, it's it's in a low, colder part of the country or whether whether it's in the suburb. Or, sorry, the location setting, which is whether it's in a city or in the suburbs, in the rural part of the country. Uh, there is weather setting, whether it's in a warm climate or in a cold climate. Undergraduate uh, body, so how many undergraduates study at the college? There are rankings. Uh, while we don't encourage students to. Uh, you know, run behind the rankings, but of course there you have access to those rankings here. Uh, there is the tuition fees uh, structure. What is the tuition fee like? This is annual tuition fee, yearly tuition fees, living expenses. Um, and what is the selectivity like, you know, whether it's a highly selective college or a less selective college uh, or a selective college. So there are some colleges which are highly selective and then some colleges which are selective. So when I say a highly selective college, the, the number of students who are considering that college is very high. The number of students who are applying to that college and number of students who are being considered for a scholarship at that college might be higher, uh, but the selectivity is low. A college is highly selective means more students are applying to that college. Um, and uh, the selectivity percentage wise is pretty low. Average first year class size and virtual campus tour. So these are really wonderful resources for you to explore all the colleges, to learn more about them, to understand them. Then there are all the websites. You can go to the websites and of course, explore those websites also and go into more depth and sort of uh, gain a better understanding of all the colleges. That's not all. Uh, you can also go to these links and it will open a college specific profile. 
So I just click this center college and it opened the profile for that college, which is a much more elaborate profile. You know, you get a proper write-up of all the colleges, about three to 400 words. Uh, you get uh, a lot of other relevant information, application information and all of that. So you have access to all of this information. There is a 20 minute uh, yeah, now video time. also, which you can watch, which will give you a lot of other insights about the colleges. Yeah. That's the first part of the sheet. The second part of the sheet is the list of majors and minors which are offered at the college. This is something which, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, and uh, this is where you can find the list of all the majors that are offered across all the colleges, all the next genius colleges. Uh, so let's just search, let's say, uh, biochemistry. So which all biochemistry and you will find out all of these colleges have a biochemistry major. And then, uh, of course, they have other programs related to biochemistry also. So this, this matrix, we call it a, a, a comparison matrix. This matrix really helps you identify the colleges for yourself. Now, you need to sit down, take time to identify the top five colleges that you would like to go to. Think about yourself. Think about the kind of place that you would like to go to. Would you like to go to in a go to a college which has larger class sizes, which is a big university? Uh, or would you like to go to a smaller college uh, where the class sizes are smaller, where you get better engagement with your peers, with the professor? Both of them have their pros and cons. Uh, and we uh, and talking about the pros and cons of those universities is a different session. Next Genius is doing many such sessions in the bi week you know, every Friday, every alternate Thursday, Friday, we are doing these sessions where we are talking about all of these things. Uh, just tomorrow, we have a session talking about rankings and these all these videos are also there on YouTube. So uh, talking about fit, talking about the good fit, uh, selecting the right college, that session is uh, something which I cannot take up right now. But look at all those factors. Look at the factors that you would like to consider when you are shortlisting colleges for yourself, right? And then identify the list of top five colleges that you know, that you would like to be considered for. From that list, we will assign you one college for which the whole next steps will happen, you know, for which the interviews and uh, and the uh, and the college application will happen. So, all right, I'll just take one second break to like 10 seconds of break. Okay. So that's one. Second is uh, another very interesting resource which I've prepared is the, the location of the colleges. So we have uh, placed all the colleges on a map and we have also placed some international airports on the map. So you can look at the colleges in India and the colleges uh, in the US uh, which are there and uh, we just have a college uh, which we'll have to remove um, but yeah, all these colleges are there and you can just look at the location map, uh, which, uh, which part of the US would you like to go to? There is the East Coast, there is the West Coast of the US. Uh, you might have family living in different states um, and you, would, you might want to be closer to your family. There's uh, colleges in Mississippi, Texas, Atlanta, Florida, um, uh, South Carolina. And then the state of Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, New York, state of New York, uh, Oregon, and San Francisco. So all of these colleges, and then of course, there are a couple of colleges in India. There is uh, Plaksha University, which is located in Chandigarh, uh, Vijay Bhumi University, which is located near Mumbai. So these, this again is a very useful resource for you to look at the location. And if you are a visual person, you would you might want to look at the map and try to sort of see uh, the kind of place, the kind of city, state you would like to go to, right? So that's all the background information that you will need uh, when you start filling the level two form. Now, uh, without any further ado, let me just take you through the level two form and actually fill it for you. And while I fill it, I'll also keep on uh, sharing my comments and tell you about what to think about, what not to think about and things like that, yeah? So enter your full name, don't enter your partial name, don't say uh, Devesh only, just write your full name, Devesh Lati, right? Just 
don't be curt, right? Proper full responses. If you are um, um, you always use the first name first and the last name or the family name second. Uh, email ID, again, uh, I don't need to uh, remind you that you need to be very careful while entering your email ID because that is the primary mode of communication for us, right? Be careful while entering your email ID. Which gender identity do you uh, most identify with? Male, female, or if you would not like to uh, mention that, that's also all right. Uh, enter your registration Insta Mojo ID. So my Mojo ID is this. So I just enter that. Um, this e uh, Mojo ID was emailed to you when you registered with us. You know, uh, it's also present. So when you register with us, you get back. Uh, you know, when you pay the registration fees on Insta Mojo, you get an Insta Mojo ID, something like this. That's the ID that you need to fill. Do not add a space or a extra characters. Uh, after this, it should just be the Mojo ID. Uh, it needs to be precisely in this form. No space before, no space after. Enter your parents' email ID. What's your mobile number? Your parents' mobile number. And next. Which school are you in? Uh, if there are multiple branches of your school, if you are at a DPS, enter the branch name. Also, if you are at a City Montessori school, uh, if you are at a heritage school, a Shiv Nadar school, if you have, if you are at a school which has multiple branches, enter the branch name also. Uh, for me, I'll just say that I'm at the Next Genius Foundation in Andheri. Yeah. Mumbai. My school counselor is Radha. Her email ID is this. Her phone number is this. And next, yeah. If you don't have a school counselor, you can enter your school principal's name also, or your private. If you have, if you're working with a private counselor, you can enter your private counselor's name, email ID, and phone also. Uh, this is also a very important page. This is the page where you tell us about your financial information, about your family um, um, background, your financial background, and also about the funds or the the money that your parents have kept aside for your education, right? Uh, which currency are you using to add the details? Uh, many of you would use the Indian rupee, but if you're not using an Indian, Indian rupee, if you are, let's say, using US dollars or Bangladeshi taka or Nepali rupee, whatever currency you're using, you'll have to enter that over here. And then all the following questions, uh, you'll have to use the same currency to answer the following questions, yeah? Total family income, again, uh, the, uh, your parents will have to submit your tax return documents when requested. Do not under-report the family income. Uh, whatever information you provide to us is not going to affect your scholarship. But if you under-report it and if you figure it out, you know, if you understand that you're under-reporting it, uh, you know, uh, it might cause harm to you because next genius scholarships only cover the tuition fees we do not cover the living expenses. So the uh, uh, living expenses are something that is that, that will be covered by your family, your parents' income or your uh, support from your family. So you will have to be correct and you'll have to enter this information carefully. You'll have to enter the right amount over here. Uh, uh, this information is very important to us. So uh, make sure that you are not uh, under-reporting it. Some students might under-report thinking that if I enter a smaller amount or lesser parent income, uh, then I will get more scholarship. No, nothing like that. These are not need-based scholarships. These are merit-based scholarships. So whatever amount you mention over here, it's not going to affect your scholarship amount. It's for us to understand that your family can pay the living expenses. So I'll enter my amount over here. I'll. Uh, what's your family contribution? Uh, again, do not uh, what what is the amount that your parents have agreed to contribute towards your uh, uh, education? Then this is per year. We are talking about annual year. So how much money uh, would you like? Would your would your parents uh, agree to pay, or would your parents like to pay towards your undergraduate education? It's a four year program in most cases. So uh, think about that. Again, uh, I cannot emphasize enough that do not underreport this. 
uh, sit with your parents, sit carefully, uh, sit, sit and sort of have that discussion with them and uh, think about what is the amount that you are entering. I am entering something, don't copy paste this. Every family is different. You will have to enter your own amount. Yeah. Uh, Next Genius offers only tuition scholarships. That means living expenses are the responsibility of the family. How will your family pay for it? Well, uh, my family will pay for it through the first, uh, uh, through our income and savings. Some of you might need external help like loan or sponsorship. And uh, uh, can your family provide financial support? Some of you might say no to it, but that's all right. Whatever it is, it is, right? Mention the detail of the sources of financial for the funding of your living expenses. So for, for me, I would say it's my parents salary uh, we have some savings we have a property uh, uh, which my parents would be happy to sell if, if i get a scholarship at next genius all right enter your parents details uh, mr uh, manoj lathi uh, enter the organization and designation don't simply say he's manager at something uh, manager or don't simply say he's owner what what is the designation and where is your father or your guardian working? If they are owner of a business, enter the business name also. So I'll say my father is a manager at the next genius company. Yeah. You, your response needs to be like this only. This designation at this organization, owner at so-and-so company, program manager, uh, general manager, um, um, uh, clerk at the so and so bank, anything that that is relevant to you, write that in this format only. Uh, mother's name, uh, she is a homemaker. So that's what I'll say over here. But of course, if mom is working, you need to enter uh, what designation and at which company. Yeah. Moving forward, what is your plan major? Again, I'm planning to study. Uh, computer science but if you have something else you say that if you are undecided also it's completely all right that it's not going to be held against you what enter your grade 12 or grade 10 scores uh, so i'll have to enter the details i would like you to enter the details also so let's say in 10th i got um, english i got a 7.5 out of 10 in uh, uh, i had hindi in which I got uh, 8 out of 10. Uh, math, I got a 7 out of 10. No, actually, math, I got 10 out of 10. Uh, science, I got a 8.5 out of 10. And social studies, I got a 8 out of 10. So that made my total uh, CGPA as 8 out of 10, right? So that's how you need to enter that. Okay. Uh, CBSE. Same way for grade 11, you need to enter the same way. English, I had physics, I had math, I had chemistry, and I had uh, engineering, drawing. Yeah. And I got an eight in chemistry. And so my CGPA uh, in 11th was 7.8. Okay. This is how you need to enter, of course, for IB, uh, Cambridge. Uh, you'll have different formats for all of this. So follow that format and your academics very well. If you if your exams were canceled, um, if you did not receive an external CBSE score, a board score uh, for your exams, you need to explain the circumstances over here. Use this form to tell us about your academics in grade 10 and 11. We would like to know your overall score, but if for some reason your overall scores are not available, then explain it in detail about what happened. If you have taken SAT, enter your SAT or ACT scores over here. I did not take ACT. I took a SAT and I got a 15, 14, 50 out of 1600. Yeah. Um, some of you have taken SAT or some of you are taking it on the... 5th of October coming up, you know, so you need to say that, okay, I've registered for the upcoming SAT or ACT. Whatever it is, you can uh, use this form to tell us. Common app is the portal which you will 
you can you'll use to submit your application to the colleges all of you will need to create that account um, and you will need to enter your eight digit common app id over here yeah the common app id uh, where it is how you can find all that information is over here other than next genius partner colleges where are you applying so uh, we need to understand what all other colleges are you applying to enter all your colleges and list all the colleges that you're applying to in the de descending order of your preference so let's say uh, my top priority is um, uh, Harvey Mud um, College. So we are talking about other than next genius colleges, right? So don't mention all the next genius colleges because we'll get all that information in your preference order, which is on the next pages. Uh, but we are asking about the colleges which are not a part of next genius. So just enter the name one by one. Uh, I'm applying to the IITs. I'm applying to... Um, Ashoka University and so on. And you can enter all of these like this over here. Yeah. Uh, don't uh, press enter, enter again and again. Just write it with a comma because it's easier for us to uh, get that data if you enter it like this with commas and uh, without these entries. Yeah. Next. Okay. Uh, important page. Uh, this is a page where you will submit your top five preferences. So which college would you prefer to attend? Attend. Rank the college in the order of your preference. You will eventually be selected to participate in the interview for just one college. Yeah. So my number one college is Ithaca College. Number two is Lewis and Clark. Number three is Ohio Wesleyan. Number four is Syracuse University. Number five is Transy, Transylvania University. This order is something which is very personal to you. Take it seriously, research the colleges well. Don't look at just rankings or just one or two parameters. Look at them broadly because this is the place you're going to spend your four years of your undergraduate education at. So uh, spend time identifying the right college for yourself. Don't take this step lightly uh, because it's not going to help you if you just spill it randomly or if you fill it without much, you know, without. You know, if you fill this carelessly. Okay, uh, moving forward, uh, uh, we are talking about the two video links, the links, the, the unlisted videos that you need to submit. So this is where you'll have to submit the two video links. I'm just uh, copied two links and I'm just pasting them over here for, but for you, you will have to paste two proper links, the video of you, the student and the video of your parent sub uploaded as unlisted links on YouTube. Then this is the final page, uh, just some uh, points for you to know uh, and to acknowledge. First is, are you aware that Next Genius only covers tuition fees and not living expenses? Yes, I understand. Are you aware that Next Genius scholarships are non-binding? Non-binding means that when you win a Next Genius scholarship, you are not bound. It's not an ED, it's not a ED, which means that if you win a scholarship, you can decide whether you want to accept the scholarship or decline the scholarship. Uh, we would like you to accept, but it is your choice. Take the right decision, take the decision which is best for you. And we will, of course, help you understand. We will help you decide uh, and di we'll discuss this with you, talk with you about finances and all of that. If you are selected for the next genius scholarship, you authorize us to release your name, high school name, college name, and a picture in Next Genius website and newsletters. All right. If you are happy with the college allocation, and if you wish to continue in the process, you'll have to pay a four thousand rupee refundable deposit. Uh, the refundable deposit is completely refunded back to you when you participate in the interviews and when you complete your college application. Um, it has no relation with whether you won a scholarship, did not win a scholarship, whether you decided to go to the college or not. It's completely all right in any scenario. If you participate in the interview and submit your college application, your money will be refunded. And that's it. Uh, thank you. And uh, just, uh, just go through the whole form once again. Make sure you have filled it clearly, carefully. It will take about half an hour, one hour to submit this form. But it will take a little longer. Actually, not half an hour. You know, 15, 20 minutes are good enough. But if you, it will take longer to think about your preference order. And that's it. Uh, once you submit it, 
uh, we'll get back to you uh, soon. Uh, and that's when you can start working on your common app and you know you can start working on your college application. Uh, what happens after that? What happens once you have submitted the form? Now I'll come back to this document, the level two sheet and just uh, the level two instructions and just take you through what happens after you have submitted the form, yeah? Once you submit the form, we will get back to you with the college allocation. So as we said, by October 14th, we'll start assigning you colleges. You will get your college and then you will have to get back to us by submitting a fully refundable deposit uh, with, within a certain period of time. Uh, the deposit will be refunded to you after you participate in the interview. Please note that the full amount will be forfeited uh, for the students who reserve an interview spot, but who fail to submit the college application or who fail to participate in the interview. So if you have reserved, you have blocked a spot and please understand that there are limited spots. If you block a spot, but you don't move forward, then your money will be uh, will, will not be refunded. Uh, you will participate in college information sessions. So colleges will come, all the admission officers will come and you will get a chance to interact with them. And eventually uh, you will submit your college application by January 1. And then uh, later in January, uh, 21st of January, and so you will participate in online group interviews. And that's how you'll get access to these scholarships. There is some more information in this document. Make sure you go through it. Uh, and that's the end of my presentation. But let me just uh, uh, tell you a couple of points. First is uh, the Next Genius Scholarship Program is not just about the scholarship. It's not about the scholarship only. With the scholarship program, you get a chance to be a part of a community of scholars, which this community prepares you for success in life. You know, the community is a place where you get mentored from, uh, from your mentoring from your seniors. You get to be a part of internships. We help you connect with internships and uh, the seniors who have won these scholarships in the past year, they uh, mentor you, they help you with your resume, with your uh, postgraduate college application, with your job applications. We invite leadership speakers uh, to sort of train you. So it's a community, uh, you know, which is together uh, and which will help you as you move forward through your careers. Uh, we were talking about the scholars uh, who have just graduated a little while ago in the team. And, you know, uh, these scholars are really doing very well at college and some of them who have graduated have gone into uh, Columbia and Rice, uh, those kind of universities and they're pursuing their post-graduation. And some of them, uh, you know, they are, they are doing their, they are in their dream jobs. They're pursuing, you know, they're, they're working in the US. So it's not just the scholarship that you get, but you get the support of the community and you get to be a part of this community all your life where you'll, you'll sort of become alumni of the scholarship program and which is something which is much more valuable than the scholarship. So that's where I'll, uh, I'll uh, stop. It's been 40 minutes since I'm speaking. So I'll pause for a moment, but thank you once again uh, for being here. And once again, congratulations uh, for clearing the next genius level one test. The chances of winning the scholarships are much higher right now. Uh, we expect to shortlist about seven to 800 students for level two. And of those 800, at least 200 will end up winning some kind of scholarship. So the chances of winning those scholarships are much higher at this stage. Uh, I can uh, assure you many of you are going to be, uh, uh, you are going to win these scholarships and sort of going to be at the colleges and sort of, you know, benefit from the whole program. Uh, by being a part of the community. Uh, if you're watching this video online or later, make sure you understand the timeline. Uh, uh, October 14 is when we start allocating the colleges. Uh, so if you're filling the form after that, that means once you've filled the level two form, within two to three days, we'll get back to you with a college allocation. And then after that, you will have to get back to us with the allocation confirmation. All right. Uh, with that, I'll just uh, thank all of you and let me also thank uh, the team, uh, Devika, uh, Radha, Anant, Kajol, 
and Rudra who have been uh, working with you with with uh, a lot of uh, um, you know uh, for, for the very long time. Yeah. So uh, I'll stop the recording and uh, I'll just uh, invite Devika for the Q and A.